Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the seminar today with the University of West London. We're really excited to have Nick Miller on board, who is going to be running through a presentation. So for all the students who are just joining in now, we just want to let you know that there will be an opportunity for Q&A at the end of the session. So do feel free to put your questions in the chat box. We will kindly request everyone to stay on mute up until the end of the session. So without any further delay, I'm going to actually pass on to Nick. Um, thank you so much for your time and over to you, Nick, for today's session. OK, that's brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, Ravina. I really appreciate the opportunity of uh, meeting with everybody this afternoon. So my name is Nick Miller. I'm the senior international officer from the University of West London. And I'm going to be talking with you for around 30 minutes through some slides, some presentation slides. And um, I'll be showing a couple of videos also. And hopefully that might uh, inspire you to ask some questions at the end. So to begin with, then I'll just share my screen and bring up the presentation. Okay, brilliant. I, I, I trust that you can all see the screen. And I'll begin by saying really, um, the first thing I want to say is I think it's really important that you work with an agency like SIUK. Um, you can get a lot of uh, free support and independent advice about studying in the UK. Um, many, we, we, at University of West London, we receive many uh, direct applications. Um, but I just really feel that there's a lot of benefits uh, for you to work with an agency such as SIUK. As a university, we, we tend to prioritize applications that we receive through our um, education agents. So um, you've you've done a very um, you know wise made a very wise decision um, working with uh, SIUK. So to kick off, then, so University of West London is is really known as the career university. Um, and it's pretty obvious the reasons why, because we're based in London. And um, if any of you have ever traveled to London or if you're living in London now, uh, I'm sure you can appreciate that it's kind of the epicenter of uh, employment opportunities, commercial life in the UK. Um, so as a university, uh, as a consequence, uh, you tend to find that our courses are um, reflective of the skills uh, offered within, uh, you know, required by by industry. Uh, let me just move move over to the next page. Okay, so this is where we're located. Um, if any of you have travelled to the UK before, you've probably landed at Heathrow Airport, and we're just twenty minutes away on the London Underground, on the uh, Piccadilly Line or the new uh, Elizabeth Line that uh, recently opened. So we've got terrific transport links to uh, not just Heathrow, but the rest of central London and other parts of the UK. Um, being on the west part of London, um, one of the benefits really is it's more of a residential area. Um, so it's a little bit quieter in atmosphere compared to to central London around Oxford Street, Piccadilly Circus, Big Ben, all those famous landmarks. 
where it's it's quite heavily congested with with traffic where we are um it's uh, uh it's very peaceful and uh, lots of parks but we also have uh, uh lots of leisure activities lots of shopping restaurants cafes so there's plenty of plenty to do in and around the area the main campus is at ealing and ealing uh broadway is a, is a, is a quite a big uh, shopping center so this is the main campus you can see in the image there um, we call it St. Mary's Road. Now, this building has been a centre for education for well over 100 years. Uh, originally, it was a school. And then over time, it evolved into the Ealing College of Art in the 1960s. And then in the uh, 90s, it became Thames Valley University. And then we rebranded in the early 2000s to uh, University of West London. So... Uh, the, the the main campus at St Mary's Road is state of the art. You know we invested 150 million pounds in the campus and facilities around five or six years ago. Um, so it's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So these photos I took, um, I think in the evening on a Saturday, as I was going to the office to grab some things. So. The point is, it's just really convenient if you're a student and you're working on some important projects or assignments and you need to get access to the library or perhaps you need some like uh, editing facilities in the in the uh, music production suite. Um, the facilities are accessible all, all of the time. Um, we have various other buildings dotted around the Ealing area. And um, this is a, a, another example, Century House. We also have um, a building we um own in reading where we offer some healthcare related courses and we recently acquired ruskin college in oxford which we are we, we are currently developing uh, to offer postgraduate programs in the near future um this is the other main campus that we have this is in brentford brentford is just slightly further west and some of you who are fans of football may be uh, familiar with Brentford uh, Football Club. So it's very close to their, to, to their ground. So uh, in this building here, we're offering uh, predominantly business-related courses and also healthcare, nursing, midwifery. In fact, the top uh, two floors of this building are a simulation of a, a UK hospital ward. Um, so, sorry, just moving back. Um, what I just wanted to mention is some courses... Uh, are delivered across the two campuses. So there is a shuttle bus service, uh, which is free for students to access. The bus runs every 20 minutes and it takes roughly 10 to 15 minutes to get from door to door. So it's uh, it's very, very convenient. Um, yeah, so here's just some pictures of Ealing Broadway, the Ealing area, uh, just to it sort of emphasize the, the open spaces and the, you know, the, uh, the commercial, uh, and leisure um, activities that are available, the cinemas, restaurants, cafes, everything that you, you could possibly want. It's a very safe area as well. And, you know, you can walk around and uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very um, lively and uh, very, very safe and comfortable area to live and uh, be a student. Um, one of the things I'd like to sort of emphasize, you know, with us being the Korea University is that our campus um, is within close proximity of some of the top companies in the world. So within a stone's throw of uh, our Paragon building, you've got the you know headquarters of Coca-Cola, Sky Television, Diageo, Cisco Systems. So there's a lot of uh, work that goes on between our sort of careers um, service and uh, various academic teams engaging with uh, local businesses. Um, so we're very keen to not only provide uh, employment and placement opportunities for our students, uh, but also, you know, support the, these local companies if, with their own kind of research activities and uh, uh, development plans uh, and provide that sort of academic uh, support to them. Um, so this is what it looks like at St. Mary's Road on the inside. This is what we call the heart space, the main communal area um, at St. Mary's Road. So there's the cafeteria, the students union bar. Um, you can see the Paul Hamlin library there over three floors. So we have um, a quiet area for study and then we have uh, other areas for collaborative study with other students. 
and then uh, to the left there above um, that cafeteria there's there's uh, music practice rooms we've got a professional radio studio uh, even just around the corner there we've even got like a museum for Heathrow Airport so we have the, uh, the archives for Heathrow there just to emphasize that the work that we do within um, in and around the Heathrow Airport area with its uh, hospitality and uh, uh, logistics businesses um, so the two sites are just really superbly equipped and as a student you're not going to be disappointed with the facilities we're expanding all the time as a university that's the thing to, to remember we're definitely a university on a positive trend in a a, a growing expansion uh, phase so it's a great time to join us uh, here's some other uh, images just to show you what it's like from from the uh, second or third floor and now i just really like to sort of emphasize some of our key facts and achievements as a university so the, the first point really is that uh, last year we were voted number one in the uk for student satisfaction student voice and academic support so this is a survey conducted by the uh, nss national student survey and it's uh basically in um random interviews with uh, anonymous students at uh, every campus in the UK and you know we came out tops we beat everybody all, all the kind of Russell Group universities and other newer uh, modern universities so we were incredibly proud of that achievement and as a consequence uh, we've increased in the rankings so uh, this year in the Times and Sunday Times we're 30th in the UK out of uh, 121 universities in the UK. In The Guardian, we're ranked 23rd. And because we're really pushing now um, our uh, research uh, excellence framework, we're trying to get well within the top 100. We are currently inside the top 100, but we're, we're pushing for, for rankings of around uh, 60 or 70, which will have an impact uh, when we, we look at university rankings next year. And one of the key things to mention really is graduate uh, uh, graduate employability. Uh, being in London, this is where all the job opportunities are. And because our university is offering courses which are relevant to the workplace, it's not surprising that, you know, 98% of our, our graduates gain employment within six, six months of graduation. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're quite a diverse campus. You know, we've got 17,000 students uh, at the university at any given time. Um, this September for the intake, we're estimating between 1,500 and 2,000 new international students. So we have 100 plus nationalities represented, but as a snapshot, I would say that we're quite uh, strong in South Asia. We've got a lot of interest these days from West Africa. Um, we're very popular with American students as well, and we have a, a burgeoning number of students from, from Northeast Asia and China, specifically for our music programs. So we're keen to diversify um, students and hear from students that are currently underrepresented uh, at the university. We really encourage uh, diversity, and, and we're, we're, we're improving on that all of the time. Um, I just think when you're working, uh, sorry, when you're studying in, uh, at university, there's a lot of benefits to meeting people from around the world. It's just not, it's not just the networking opportunities, it's understanding people's cultural upbringings, their, their value systems, uh, and, and it really adds uh, a positive effect in the, you know, the, in the lecture theater when you're debating particular subjects or arguing uh, any, any particular uh, academic case. Um, so as a business school, you know, we've got the Claude Littner Business School. Claude Littner, incidentally, is the advisor to Alan Sugar. So if you've ever, ever seen the BBC Apprentice show where uh, you, there's various versions of it around the world where uh, you get a, a big boss of a, a company who's kind of recruiting a, a, a new um, executive and they, it's kind of like a talent show we, you know that the best person wins but anyway Claude Littner is quite well known on British TV as, as being the the main advisor to Sir Alan Sugar 
on The Apprentice. Um, so our business school, we offer MBA programs and we have quite a, a large range of entre entrepreneurship programs. The reason being is we have our own enterprise hub within the university. So we work very closely, not with just students, but also within the local community to um, take on board people's um, business ideas or services for, for new products or services and try and develop and find funding and um, and, and, and all being well um, launch, help launch and support uh, new, new uh, business services. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, so we're quite proud with our School of Computing and Engineering. We work with Amazon as well, which is, is quite a unique partnership that we have in place. Um, so we've got quite a, an array of alumni from um, their, uh, various walks of life, but you'll notice that we've got quite a strong alumni from the world of music and uh, culinary arts, hospitality. Um, we even have uh, the current uh, Foreign Secretary here in the UK, James Cleverly, MP. He, he's a graduate of our university. Uh, but some of our most famous names are probably R Ronnie Wood, the guitarist with the Rolling Stones, um, the producer Alex De Kid, who's worked with Eminem and Rihanna, Matt Tong from Block Party, Pete Townsend from The Who, and probably most famous of all, Freddie Mercury from Queen, who we, we name our students' union bar after Freddie's bar. Um, so within the University of West London, we have the London College of Music. So London College of Music is uh, the exam board that you generally take if you're taking a musical instrument like piano or violin. So because of that, we've just got a very, you know, a very strong option for, for music. Um, looking around at some of our other faculties, uh, key strengths that I should mention, we have a very strong college of nursing and midwifery and healthcare. So we work closely with the NH NHS, the National Health Service Trusts in Northwest London and Berkshire. And we're excited to launch an MSc in nursing with pre-registration, um, which is live now on our website and we're get, expecting our first intake in September. This is a really coveted qualification to have if you've got a background in, in, in nursing and healthcare. Also within that department, uh, a popular course for international students is uh, MSc in public health. Um, we do have a lot of applications from all over the world for that, for that particular subject. Uh, within computer and engineering, uh, I would say artificial intelligence, uh, cybersecurity, uh, applied project management, they're, they're really popular courses um, that we receive applications from, from overseas for. Within the London School of Film, Media and Design, at undergraduate level, we have things like fashion and textiles, um, we have uh, media production, film, those sorts of subjects. And at postgraduate level, within fashion, we do things like luxury uh, fashion brand management, uh, we do things like visual effects, uh, advertising and branding. Um, so there's quite a good choice of subjects there within, within that department. Music I've already touched upon, you know, just to give you an overview, we're doing music performance, music management, uh, and, you know, music like post-production as well. We have our own in-house record label. So lots of options there. Um, and then social sciences and human, you know, human and social sciences, we're doing things like psychology. Um, we do a lot of work with the Metropolitan Police in London. So we do, do a lot of police training. So as a consequence, we're offering things like criminology, criminal psychology, addiction studies, uh, policing studies. So we're very well known for that. Hospitality and tourism, we do event management, we do airport management, which is a really popular one. In fact, recently I was on a flight to Lagos in Nigeria and I checked in at Heathrow at Virgin Atlantic, put all my luggage through and I had my exhibition banner with uh, a, my UWL uh, business card in, 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 in the uh, kind of business card slot on the, on, on the banner. And uh, the, the the girl at the check in said, "Oh my word! I, I used to I used to be a student there. I did airport management. So 
it was really quite nice to see that, that, you know, it's evidence again of somebody who's studied with us, who's ended up getting a job within their, their, their chosen pathway, which is really nice to see. Um, yeah, we have a really good business school, as I mentioned already. We have law. If you're doing law with us um, at postgraduate level, we were offering specialisms in intellectual profit, uh, property, commercial law and uh, financial law as well. OK, sort of moving on. Um, here's just some images of the uh, School of Nursing and Midwifery. Um, obviously, design, branding. Um, these are just some electronic music production students. Uh, this is a portfolio. Uh, I, I, I won't really show this video too much, but I'll just talk about the student who's concerned. That that that, that student was that was his portfolio folio basically, and he's one of our recent success stories. So Alex, he uh, is from Serbia. Uh, he did uh, graphic design with us, and when he presented his final. Um, show um we, we we generally if you're uh, uh, creative art students we we give them like a final show in front of uh, the industry so we invite advertising agencies etc to come in and view our students uh, portfolios and he picked up some work working with uh, an advertising agency and he uh worked on a project for the localization localization campaigns for absolute vodka uh, in Brazil and Indonesia, I believe. And then following that, he moved to Oslo in Norway, and now he has his own design practice. And he's, his main client is Foodora, which is the number one food delivery service in Scandinavia. So that's a really good sort of recent success story that we've had. <laughs> Again, I mentioned about the Enterprise Hub. Um, here's some examples of products that we, uh, we we've developed so we do also have, we have a food innovation center uh, and we launched our own vegan chocolate brand called push chocolate we even have one called eat grub which is crickets which are high in protein very healthy for you we coat them in sweet chili and lime piri piri and you can actually buy these in uh, the uk supermarket sainsbury's so it's just examples of you know how the university supports new business ideas, develops them and, and launches them in the marketplace. And you as a, a business student or from any faculty, really, you have access to the, the enterprise hub to, to get involved with that. Um, when you're not studying with us, we have a range of clubs and societies available for you to be involved with. Uh, there are quite a wide range there. And if there's something that's not represented currently, you can talk with the students union and, and they can help you. So we have everything from uh, a law society to the garlic bread society for uh, culinary art students who want to uh, taste garlic bread at various local restaurants and write reviews about them. We have dramatic art societies, music. Um, we have uh, lots of sports clubs. So um, we have our own sports centre uh, on campus, which uh, consists of a fully equipped gym and two fitness studios. Um, generally, you'll find like London universities aren't campus universities. So uh, ourselves, like other universities, we tend to work with other facilities locally uh, to uh, provide uh, sports uh, and recreation. So we work with Brentford Football Club, for example, um, for uh, some of our um, football activities. Um, and um, Freddy's Bar, I already mentioned our Students' Union Bar with uh, events and entertainment on um, pretty much uh, most evenings of the week. And then there are some societies which are around a particular nationality. So we, we have a Nigerian society, for example, I know that there's a, a Nigerian student on this call. So, you know, tapping into your own diaspora, your own group of, uh, of local communities in London is a really helpful thing to do. They can really help you, particularly with support, finding work and accommodation and just having a, you know, a, a friendly face from, from uh, you know, a, a language, a common language that you can, that you can reach out to. Um, so, so, Talking about accommodation, um, the university has a dedicated team who can provide um, uh, lots of uh, access to uh, accommodation in the local area. We have various buildings where students can 
can uh, sign up for our accommodation. The, the benefit of taking accommodation through UWL is you don't have to worry about putting down deposits, uh, all the utility bills will be included in the price and you've got that ongoing support. So, you know, if the gas boiler goes in the middle of winter or, you know, you've got no electricity, you just call the hotline and you've got 24 hour support and it will be fixed. But we also work with lots of um, local private landlords as well that are all approved by us. Um, so, there's plenty of options for for students but what i would say london don't be under any illusion you know london is an expensive city to live um but there are benefits uh, obviously for, for for being there so most students who study at uwl are generally traveling within a 20 minutes radius on public transport from uh, their accommodation to our campuses if you go on our website and search accommodation, there's lots of information about our accommodation options, but here's just some examples of what uh, student accommodation looks like at UWL. Um, and then other student support teams that we have available is the careers and volunteering team. These are really important for you to build your CV um, and, and, and gain some experience uh, while you're in the UK. Of course, many of you probably know that if you're a student uh, in the UK, you can work for 20 hours per week during term time. And then at the weekends, sorry, uh, during, uh, you know, the holidays like Christmas or Easter, you're, you're allowed to work full time. So UWL have our own talent bank, like our own sort of uh, employment agency, if you like. So there are always lots of jobs on campus in, in, in cafes or working in the gym or where, whatever it might be. Um, but I would, you know, of course, those jobs are available and there are always uh, there is always plenty of positions. But I would always try and encourage you to try and find some work, part time work off campus that's related to within your field of study, because ultimately you want to build your CV and get a full time job uh, upon uh, graduation. And when you graduate uh, from a university in the UK, uh, you're allowed to apply for the graduate route visa. So this will enable you to stay in the UK for two years after successfully completing your course. Uh, and, you know, you can gain experience, earn some money um, and with the intention of returning back to your home country and uh, uh, continuing your career there. I mean, that's what the UK government want to hear. They want to know that you're going to study with us, enjoy the experience, gain some skills, but ultimately go back home and, and, and pursue your career there. But the reality is, you know, particularly if you're in a specialist field, that you may be lucky enough to get sponsored uh, by a, a UK employer if you make your yourself indispensable. So the UK does have skills shortages right now in, in, in various fields, particularly in healthcare. Um, we're looking for um, additional workers from overseas. Um, one thing I would say about working, you know, I, I'm sure many of you have got like your own little businesses back home. Uh, technically, you're not allowed to be self-employed and you're not allowed to run businesses remotely from the UK. Uh, so you must be fully aware of that and abide by the, 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 the rules. Um, one other thing I'd like to say is, because this came up for me last week, uh, I had a student who graduated two years ago who uh, was asking about um, uh, access to careers support. Um, you have a lifetime access to UWL careers and volunteering team. So it doesn't man matter when you graduated, you've got um, lots of support there to help you find work throughout your career. So when you graduate, join the alumni and get access to lots of benefits. Okay, so on to tuition fees. Um, I'll cover this um, as briefly as I can. Um, so our fees, I would say, are quite competitive compared to other London universities. And pretty good if you look at the fees of other universities around the UK. The reason for that is it's just the ethos of our university. We want to be as accessible as we can to international students and, and not be a barrier uh, uh, with, with high fees. 
And I think the other thing to think about is because the living costs are so high in London and accommodation costs are higher, by having lower course fees, it kind of balances out. So if you go to a, say, a Russell Group University in a northern city in the UK, you know, that the, the course fees are going to be higher, but the living costs are going to be lower. So on balance, UWL is prob- probably very similar. So undergraduate, 14,250. That's pretty much for every course. Postgraduate, 14,750. And then our MBA program and the MSc in nursing with pre-registration that I mentioned, they are £16,000 per year. We have January and September start dates for most courses, but not all of them. So please always check if you're coming in January because we have a, a slightly limited range. If you're a student where you're from an education system where you've done 12 months, uh, sorry, 12 months, 12 years of schooling and you require a foundation year, um, the good news is um, UWL offer foundation courses. So our foundation courses are integrated into your main degree. So the advantage of that is you get one visa for the duration of your studies. If you're choosing to go to a pathway provider, sort of NCUK or a, you know, a, um, a one of the other um, providers out there, we you know we we do welcome those qualifications, those foundation courses for for access to to undergraduate level if you've successfully completed them. Um, we also offer something called an extended postgraduate and an ex- enhanced extended postgraduate. These are really like pre-master's programs and are designed for students who either need additional support with English language, perhaps they're borderline and don't meet the entry requirement for for English language on the the postgraduate course, or if they've got a third class degree or an ordinary level degree. Um, We... We want to encourage people to, to, as much as possible, to come on to our postgraduate courses. But one thing I would say, we don't accept students who have a HND, Higher National Diploma. We don't accept HND students onto master's programmes, and we don't accept them onto our enhanced uh, extended postgraduate route either. Unfortunately, you're going to have to top up your course and get a degree. Uh, and I'd probably recommend doing that in your home country. It probably makes more economic sense to do that before you apply for uh, postgraduate level. Um, while we're on fees, I should mention about scholarships. I'm sure you'll ask me that question at the end, so I'll try and cover it now. So we have something called the International Ambassador Scholarship. So this is offered to any student on any course, and it's not just done on academic ability. We're really looking for people who are strong characters, who are passionate about their subject, who have good reasons, who can articulate their their reasons for coming to UWL and are quite motivated and and know what they want to do in the future. So these scholarships are up to £5,000. We generally offer about 25 of them in September, 25 of them in January. And we normally get about 250 applications. Um, What's surprising is most of those applications aren't very good. People really get lazy when it comes to the support statement. So if you want to have a good chance of getting a scholarship, spend some time and effort on the um, support statement explaining exactly why you deserve that scholarship. So you can apply once you've received an offer, you need to apply for your course first, receive a conditional offer from us. And then at that stage, you're entitled to apply for the scholarship. Um, the scholarship is an, you know, it's an added extra thing. So you, you, you know, your course fees and your living costs cannot be dependent on it. So don't income, you know, in your head, don't factor that in and think, oh, that's going to help me with my accommodation costs. Of course it might do, but that can't be the, you can't depend on getting that. There's no guarantees. We look at it on a case by case basis and select the best candidates and we do it as fairly as possible. Um, Finance. So this moves me on to deposits. Now we sort of categorize each country differently. So 
low risk countries are countries like European countries, USA, some of the stronger economies in the world, like say South Korea, they would be considered low category and the deposit is a standard £3,000. Medium risk countries could be some, some countries in the Middle East, like say Jordan, for example, is a good one. Um, Egypt and the deposit there would be 50% of your course fees. And then we have a very high deposit for sort of higher risk markets. So these would be things like uh, countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nigeria, Ghana. So uh, unfortunately, the, the deposit's very high, it's £10,000. And when you consider that our course fees are only, you know, a 14,750, whatever. I mean, that's, that's more than three quarters of the course fees. The reason we ask so much is we just, we want some reassurance that you're financially um, capable of paying your course fees and you're committed to studying with us. And the benefit for you is you have less money to pay um, when, when you've paid your initial deposit. So the remaining balance can be paid in installments. That's absolutely fine. But the, there is no um, compromise on, on the deposits, really. Um, you have to pay that. And always account for currency fluctuations as well. So it's always good to in, in, in add an additional 10% to account for that. Um I don't really want to talk too much about bank statements and, and, and the, the funds that you need to support yourself, but it's not just the course fees. The, the UK government will want to see that you've got money to support your living costs. And it's uh, approximately £1,300 per month for every month of your course if you're studying with us in, in London. Um, so how do you apply? Well, Talk with SIUK, apply through them. So we have a, a portal. So you essentially upload all of your documents, your passport, academic transcripts. We're also looking for references. So one academic reference for undergraduate courses. And we want two references for postgraduate. Um, my advice, apply early as well, ideally before June. And when we've got all of your documents and you've met all the entry requirements, we will issue something called a CAS uh, certificate, sorry, confirmation of acceptance of studies. And it's with this CAS document uh, that will allow you to, to apply for the visa. Um, so we, before we get to the CAS stage, there's lots of things that you need to do, um, but we won't be issuing CASs really until June because we don't get our allocation of CAS from the UK VI until that, that, that point. Um, so what else would I say um, about uh, the process is we, we try to offer issue offers as quickly as possible, but you can anticipate a response from us within two to three weeks. If you've not heard for us, from us for some reason, please talk with SIUK. Uh, or contact us directly and we can look at your, your case. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, we prioritise all applications through SIUK. So we look at those before direct applicants. Um, it takes time to send deposits and meet all these conditions. So try and do it as, as early as you can. Otherwise, you're just creating unnecessary stress for yourselves. And, you know, last year we had students applying very late for visas, booking flights late, flights late. And as a consequence, uh, flights become very, very expensive if you, if you start booking them, you know, two or three weeks before you arrive. So think through the timeline of when you need to, to get things done and apply early. Um, some of the admissions considerations that we look for at uh, UWL for, for undergraduate, level we're looking for IELTS 6 or the equivalent uh, of the Pearson test PTE we don't take Duolingua or other uh, English language tests uh, if you need to prove your English level um, then you know you, you need to do an IELTS exam and we're looking for IELTS 6 at undergraduate we don't really like gaps in study so for undergraduate courses we're looking for a maximum of two, maybe three years. If you do have gaps, please send us a CV 
so you can clearly outline what you've been doing with your time since you finished school. Um, and then for postgraduate level, again, gaps in study is really important. Um, gaps up to 10 years are fine. Um, but we, we get worried, really, when students haven't been in education for some time. They might be out of touch with uh, the way to write academic essays to, to kind of source their reference materials in, in, in assignments. So um, our admissions team are quite strict. You know, we do scrutinize applications very carefully. All qualifications that you send to us from your, your degree from overseas, uh, we put through a system called ECTIS, which is a portal where we can check the uh, equivalency um, of uh, UK qualifications. And like I said, third class honours degree will push you to uh, an extended programme. And the same goes for an ordinary degree. HNDs are not accepted. OK, uh, additional considerations that you should think about, you know, particularly for postgraduate level. If you're bringing dependents, this is really important. Uh, you know, we all have our own lives and, you know, you might have a husband or a wife or children that you want to bring with us to the UK. That's absolutely fine. And you can get visas for them. Um, but you need to come up with a plan to demonstrate how you can financially support them. Um, so when you're at CAS stage, um, what we tend to do for students from higher risk markets, we not not everyone, uh, but some borderline cases we may, may do this as well. We conduct a pre cas credibility interview, and I, I actually do those myself. Um, it's a serious interview. I pretend to be a UK uh, border agency staff, and I ask lots of questions. And the thing that surprises me from my experience is how little some students know about the subject that they've applied for they've paid a huge deposit to study with us they're committed to coming to our university but i asked them some basic questions about what modules they're going to be studying and they can't answer them so you know this is a really important thing to think about and prepare for because people do get stopped you know they do get randomly stopped and checked at the, at the border and they might get asked for interview before they get uh, issued their visa so be fully aware of the course that you've applied for, that you're studying and, you know, be able to articulate yourself well and explain why you're coming to the UK and what you're going to be doing here. Um, yeah, so I can I can coach you, but I'm, when it comes to the actual credibility interview, I'm not allowed to say a thing. I treat it as if it's the real thing. So be prepared for that. OK, I mean, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. But just to kind of round up the presentation, I just wanted to emphasize again, like UWL, because we're in London and because of our course options, we're very career focused. So I just want to share this very brief video for you, um, which is from one of our Nigerian students, Caleb, who's with us currently. And he is doing digital marketing. And he's managed to secure some uh, part time paid work within our marketing department. So I'll just share this video for you to have a look at. When you come to UWL, we want to give you a really warm welcome. And you probably noticed that from day one, there is a lot of focus on your career. But then we are the Career University. Every year, the university works with over 6,000 businesses to make sure that you're learning the skills and knowledge employers are looking for. This means three things. It means that what you learn in your course will be relevant to the industry you want to work in because our courses are shaped by people who are looking to recruit the best graduate talent. It means our campus is jam-packed full of industry standard facilities that help you develop your skills in a professional environment. And finally, it means there will be plenty of opportunities for you to hear from experts and connect with professionals who don't just work in the industry, but they know it inside out. When you come to UWL, you're not just coming for a degree. You are coming to get a career that you can be proud of. From the day you start, a career team will be there to take you through steps needed in order for you to secure a successful and rewarding career when you graduate.
that's one video that I'd like to show you. And then I'll just try and show you the next one, which is a tour of our campus. And then have a think of some questions. And after we've, we've watched this video, then um, I'm happy to take some questions. My name is Nicole and I'm going to give you a quick tour around the evening campus so you'll be able to better understanding why people like me love UWL. The evening campus is really well connected and it's only 20 minutes from central London but it's also a wonderful leafy green community so you get all the benefits that London has to offer whilst also enjoying the many open spaces in the area. Here at UWL we think the support you need in order to succeed is so important. And that's why we make it the first thing you see when you set foot on campus. Here you can access loads of support and advice on things like housing, finance, health and your own well-being. You might never need help, but it's always good to know that it's there. But our support is not just for when you need help, it's for making the most of your time at university, so you can meet your full potential. Our study support team is here to help you work smarter, not just harder. They offer masterclass workshops, so you can build the skills to excel in your studies. And there's a reason why we're known as the Korean University. We support our students in finding paid work and getting relevant work experience. Long before you graduate, our careers team will support you in preparing for the world of work and a rewarding and successful career. This is the heart space, the main hub of our Ealing campus. Here you can meet friends, attend events, and bump into people you know. It was created as a part of our 150 million pound transformation of the campus that has created an inspiring social and learning environment for students. Above me is the library named after Paul Hamlet, who believed that everyone should be given the support they need in order to reach their full potential. And that sums up what UWL is all about. The library is not just a part of our campus where a wide variety of books and other learning materials are. It's also an amazing learning space with access to hundreds of computers. Each floor is set up differently. So you can study in a way that suits you. So you can choose from collaborative study, quiet study, or silent study. The library is open 24 hours, seven days a week during camp time. And the library staff are incredibly knowledgeable and are always there to help you. The main teaching area is located just off the heart space. Across the campus, there's a whole variety of lecture theatres, seminar rooms, and specialist facilities to help you gain the skills employees need. Down the corridor, you can find our 250,000 pound flight simulator. That's so good, British Airways use it. Upstairs, you can find our new biomedical labs, green screen rooms, and music production suites. In fact, the whole campus is jam packed full of amazing facilities, like our professional radio studios, mock courtroom, and hospital simulation centre. Whatever you're planning to study, there are facilities to help you build your skills for a future career. At UWL, the students really do come first. The university takes pride in listening and responding to what students have to say. That's why UWL was voted University of the Year for Student Experience. The student union plays a big part in that. They help to create a sense of community and enabling students to socialise both within their course and across the university. With nearly 50 clubs and societies, you're bound to meet people with similar interests to you. And if you're into sports and keeping fit, our brand new on-campus sports centre includes two gyms, two large fitness studios, and spacious changing facilities. Many of our sports teams even have access to professional quality facilities. And our partnership with Premier League club Brentford FC provides an exciting connection to elite level sports. I hope you enjoyed that quick tour of UWL at our Ealing campus. If there's one thing I want you to take away from this tour, is that people at UWL care. They care about you, and they care about doing their best for you. And that makes all the difference. And that's why I love UWL. If you would like to... Okay, so thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, now I'm opening uh, the floor to questions. Absolutely. Thank you, Nick, for the presentation. I think you covered quite a wide range of topics and probably already answered some of the questions that we've had come through. So yeah, thank you for that session. I'm just going to kickstart the Q&A session because we've got quite a few coming through in the chat box. Good. So the very first one you already touched on was um, scholarships. So there's kind of a follow up question to that. So the person is asking, is the £5,000 total or is it yearly in an undergraduate course? Yeah, so the, the scholarship only applies to the first year of study. 
Um, so if you're an undergraduate student, it's just year one, unfortunately. But if you're a postgraduate student, obviously it's a one year course. So you'll benefit that year. So we allocate uh, normally the top prize goes to one female, one male. You know, it's all very uh, equally sort of shared out. And then we have a range of 3,000, 2,000 down to 1,000 pounds. So all of the applications that we get in, we have a panel of us that look at them all. We read every single one and then we rank them accordingly and, um, and, and grade the, the best ones. No, so if you make the effort, you've got a good chance of being shortlisted. So it's just really about putting in the time and effort and, and, and completing that support statement. So th there is a link on our website. Just follow it. Just type in scholarships and, and the online applications there. But you can only apply when you've received an offer on a course. Great. Thanks for that reminder of that detail as well. Um, so the next question we've got coming up is actually two people have asked the same question to us, which is the entry requirements for medicine um, for a UK student. Yeah, um, as a university, we don't offer medicine programs uh, at the moment. Um, we are developing a, a medical school um, in the next two to three years. Our, our healthcare. Uh, department is focused around nursing uh, and midwifery training and, and and paramedics. Now, a lot of those courses are, are quite restricted for international students because 50% of your course is placed working in uh, an NHS hospital in the UK. So there's a kind of a conflict with your visa, etc. And it's very, very protected within the National Health Service. However, we've got permission to um, recruit international students for our MSc in nursing. But there are other health related courses which international students can apply for, for example, um, public health and uh, clinical psychology is, a, is another, another example. So just have a look at the faculty area on our website, look through the course list and, and you, you should be able to figure out uh, which, which are open to international and, and which aren't. Yeah, exactly. And there's always limited spaces for medicine anyway, so it's quite yes. a competitive program for those institutions that offer it. Um, so just following up, there's a question from the same person who asked about scholarships. Um, they're asking about the deposit. If they're saying it's just a bit confusing. What if the total fees oh, sorry, are paid up front? OK, so that's a so very good, good, very good thing that you mentioned that. So if if somebody is in a financial position to pay their fees all in one go, I would strongly encourage you to do that because you will uh, receive a 5% discount on your course fees overall if you do that. So let's say, you know, the, the course fees are 14750 for a master's degree. If your deposit is um, uh, £10,000, that, that's obviously deducted from the total amount. So you'll have 4750 remaining balance to pay. And then normally the, the the finance team will give you an invoice for that remaining balance uh, when you arrive for the for the second term. You can split the payments into two or even three installments. It's really uh, you negotiate that directly with the finance team. But pay in full if you can afford to do so. Yeah, and it's good you mentioned about the five percent uh, discount as well, so that could encourage some students who are financially secure enough to do that. Yeah, um, we've got a question. Well, this question I could answer. They're just asking if we could get a recording of the meeting. So yeah, the me meeting is being recorded. It's also being live streamed on YouTube. So I'll send across the link for any interested students in the chat box. Absolutely. Um, just to, just to add to that, Ravina, I'd say that I've, yeah. I've in the chat box I've left my personal contact details. Um, so uh, any students who 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 with us this afternoon if you if you'd like to ask some questions um outside the presentation you're more than welcome to contact me anytime a good way obviously email but uh on whatsapp my my, my phone number's there i've got whatsapp on my laptop i'm more than happy to be as responsive as i can to any questions that you that you send through to me great and yeah on that note i've actually just resent it again freshly so any students who need uh next contact details there in the chat box again so the next question we've got is around IELTS and English language requirements. So the student is asking, is IELTS absolutely mandatory if the student has studied in an English medium? So I guess they're probably meaning an English high school or an English speaking country. 
That's right. Yes. So um, it really depends on which country you're coming from. So to give an example, if you're if you're from West Africa and you've studied the WIAC exam um, uh, in countries like Nigeria, Sierra Leone or or, or, or Ghana, then we would accept that as uh, entry for for English language level. Um, You don't you're not required to do IELTS. So we look at it on a case by case basis, um, but uh, we, we, we don't really offer uh, sorry, accept many other uh, English uh, language uh, tests, only what the UK VI recommend on, the, on on their website, which is namely uh, the Pearson PTE test and, and IELTS. Right, thank you. Um, and we've got a question from Ellen regarding the duration between applying and actually getting a result for the applications. How long Usually, does it take the admissions team to get a response out to the student? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned earlier, if if you're working with SIUK, we prioritise those applications. So generally, it's between two to three weeks. Um, Sometimes there are delays. uh, And again, this this is why it's so important to apply as soon as you can, because the closer we get to the summer and the start date, the busier the admissions team is get and the longer it takes to get an offer so apply early um, and if you're not if you're not heard within two or three weeks um, by all means con- contact me directly or SI UK and we can investigate your particular application but when you've applied you have access to the portal so you can see the status online uh, of where, where your application sits and whether it's been accepted or, or rejected. If you're rejected for whatever reason, it's not the end of the world. It could be the it, you've been rejected because you're missing one or two like key documents. So we can open your case and and, and find out why why it's been rejected and give you a, a full explanation. But uh, all being well, you know, we'll give you a conditional offer, and uh, you know, we 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 hope to welcome you. Great. Yeah, and on that note, like Nick said, you can contact him or contact us if you haven't heard, um, and we can always follow up your application for West London as well. So we actually had a response from the student about the IELTS query. So the student is from India, so they're asking how likely would it be that they would need an IELTS? Yeah, they would need they would need an IELTS uh, exam. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, hope Nilanj and I hope that answers your question. So, so we've got a private message from a mm-hmm. student. This could be, I think, potentially. Um, they want to keep be anonymous, but the student is currently at another university. Mm-hmm. They're studying a BSc in computer science and have already completed two years. Yes. Um, but they are long, look, wondering how difficult would it be to say transfer across to UWL, and would that mean that they would be losing those two years and have to restart with you? Yeah, it's 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 a tricky one. So, are they in? Is it a UK university that they're at? It or, sounds like it's a UK yeah. university. Yeah. yeah. You see, um, we would view that as incompletion of studies. And, you know, what's to say that you joined us and you did two years with us and wanted to leave and go to another university? So we, we would sort of see you as a, as a slightly high risk, you know, student. Um, and we would probably reject you in all honesty. My advice is, you know, speak with your current university, try and resolve any issues you've got there and try and c- complete your degree there. Um, and, and, you know, there might be other institutions that might take you, but I, uh, quite honestly, we, we wouldn't take you if you've not completed your studies. It would uh, raise uh, alarm bells with us. But you're welcome to uh, contact me directly offline and uh, I can look at your case and, and we'll, 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 we'll give you some feedback and I'll, I'll try and advise you what the best uh, solution would be. Great. No, thanks for that offer. Again, I know I understand it gets complicated with visa compliance and things like that as well. So, yeah, good advice to the student to probably try and complete the studies where they are. So again, on the IELTS, it seems to be a lot of students are curious about that. Um, so this student is currently in an American university in Italy. So they're wondering, would they require an IELTS exam as well? Oh, uh, are they Italian? You know, I mean, uh, without more information, it's difficult to t- to know. Yeah, uh, just 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 looking at the yes, okay, she's just come back and confirmed. Yeah, yeah. Yes, she's Italian. Um, I, I wouldn't want to, <laughs> I wouldn't want to say for sure. I'd have to check with my admissions team. But uh, if you've studied in uh, an English speaking country, then it would, you know, your your English level is going to be accepted. But if you're studying in, in like a an English language. Uh, sort of an, an international university where, which is delivered in English, 
it may or may not be accepted. So I don't want to give you a definitive answer. I'd have to check out with my admissions team, but I've got a feeling you would still have to um, provide uh, IELTS to demonstrate your, your English language level. Um, yeah, I think it's very likely you're right, because just having looked at cases here within SIUK as well, I think 99.9%, .9%, Barbara, you will require um, an IELTS exam, because I went to an American university as well a couple of years ago and still had to do an IELTS exam, so there was no waiver for that, unfortunately. There's one student who is asking if their IGCSE English could be used as a waiver for IELTS, so that's from Shannon. Yeah, I mean, in theory, it, it, it should be. It depends where they studied it as well. Um, again, I don't want to give a definitive answer. You know, apply, send your qualifications, and our admissions team will review it. Or if you just want me to ask that specific question, I can get an answer for you. Just message me privately, and I, I will let you know. But it's good that you've got GCSEs. Um, that's, that's, that's great. That's half the battle, really. Sure. And the student, a same question from another student, actually. So the student's asking, in the meantime, while they're waiting for their A-level results to come out, what would you advise them to do in terms of researching universities or applying or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, um, my advice, really, if you, I, I, I'll, is that person in the UK? That's that's my my question. If they are or if they're able to visit the UK, most universities offer regular open days. So I wouldn't just stick with like presentations like this or your own research on the internet, you know, actually get on a plane or c come and visit these campuses and go to the open days, meet the teachers, uh, meet fellow students and see the facilities for yourself and, and, and see if you feel comfortable being a student there. Um, that's that's the advice that I would would give. Uh, good luck with your A levels, anyway, and um, don't don't stress out too much. <laughs> I hope you get the result that you want. Yeah, good luck, Shannon. And yeah, hopefully that was helpful as well. You can come in, visit some campuses if you want SAUK to arrange the campus visits for you. We'd be very happy to do that as well. Um, yeah, and on that note, I think we've actually run out of time, unfortunately. But okay. like Nick said, his contact details are on there. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to all the students who've joined us and a special thank you to Nick um, for the excellent presentation that we had. So we will be sharing the YouTube link with yourself, Nick, and with all the students who've joined us. So thank you once again for today. Thank you, Ravina. Thank you, SIUK. And thank you, everyone, for joining the uh, presentation this afternoon. Have a good evening.